Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you one of the most cursed things or at least libraries I've seen in .NET in a long while because I think it's equal amounts useful and genius but also what the hell is going on in your brain making this? So I think this can be used and I've actually used it myself and after the response of my latest short talking about this library and briefly mentioning it I'm going to make a full length video just to understand why I am using it and why you might want to use it. And it's using one of the most underappreciated features in .NET and that is string interpolated handlers. So let me just show you what I have here. I have this text saying, hi, I'm Nick and I'm 31 years old. The idea is that we want to extract values out of a string. So Nick, I want to extract and put it into a variable and 31 years old, I want to extract and put it into a variable. And whether that is partial JSON removal out of a skeleton or some XML stuff or like anything or like uncommon patterns. If something is not a standardized pattern, you want to extract something, you can use what I'm going to show you to just do it very easily. Now, what would you do in this situation? You can do the naive thing and try to split after the first um and then after the second um and say, okay, read the next thing. But what if it is first and last name? Uh, what if it's first and then middle and then last name, it gets a bit tricky trying to extract everything in an obvious way. Now, before I move on, I want to let you know that until the 28th of February, we are offering our two C sharp courses, getting started and deep dive completely for free forever on Dome Train. Click the link in the description and just claim them and they're yours to keep forever. So we're not going to use this. What you might be keen to use is regex. Now, I always have to Google or use ChatGPT to find out how to use regex. And I did this for this video to show the alternative and it would look something like this. First, you'd have the regex pattern, which would be hi, um, and then we need to capture the name. So I'm going to say question mark and then name over here to give it a name. And then this apparently will capture it <laughs> using ChatGPT again. I don't know what W means, probably word, I don't know, uh, but that's what you're supposed to use. And then for the second part, I'm going to use pretty much the same thing, but get a digit. I know this much. So I have the name and I have the age in this case. And then I need to say var match it using regex dot match, pass the text and then pass the pattern. And then you can say if match or whatever, you can say that the name var name equals match dot groups. And then the name I gave it here is name. So I'm going to say that and then give me the value. And then I will do the same with the H. However, this is actually a string. So I have to say int dot pause. And then I can say the name is that and then the age is that. And if I run this, this will, you know, all work. Classic good old regex. However, this is not necessarily the most performant thing. It's not also the most obvious thing for some people. I mean, yeah, it is, but it's regex. And I think there's a better way. Maybe I'm a bit too insane for thinking what I'm going to show you is a better way. But if we go on NuGet and we install the interpolated parser library that has been getting updates, by the way, which is nuts, and I install this, then look what I can see. I can just delete all that and all that. And I say I still have my text over here, so this is fine. And I'm going to just leave the name as an empty string and the age as zero. Now, how do I extract it? I'm going to say interpolated parser dot parse. First, I'm going to pass down the input, so the text, and then I'm going to use an interpolated string. And even though the type is interpolated parse string handler, this is an interpolated string handler, meaning any interpolated string will be accepted here. If you have a non-interpolated string, it's not going to be accepted. So it has to be an interpolated string. And what I'm going to do is take the string I want to parse. So that is my template, basically. And I'm going to say, what do I want to capture? Well, here I want to capture the name. So I'm going to say string interpolation name. And then the age, string interpolation, age. And this is automatically converted, as you can see, into an integer. I don't have to say int.parse or anything. And then the age as well, it is a string. And if I do that, as crazy as this looks, and I just run it, this will now capture those properties. It will, in fact, work. And you might be wondering why this works if you're not familiar with string interpolated handlers. Again, great feature, but again, these are name nothing, a zero. Then I step over this. And as you can see now, they have values and they're the correct type. So I can just print them. Simple as that, no regex required. And this is also a pretty efficient way to do it. So how does this all work? Well, basically, 
it is reverse string interpolation. So instead of passing down parameters, you're extracting them out from that template. And if I go in the parse method, you can see that the input is just a string, but the interpolated parser string handler is an interpolated string handler struct over here. And the handler just looks like this. So it is a struct, which means it can also be very efficient. Um, you can pass down the string, the character, the boolean, all of these have append formatted methods, and they use the in keyword to capture that reference. And they pass it down, they move to the next part, and there's a method for everything pretty much. So whatever you want to pass, it will work. It will use, in some cases, some pretty advanced stuff to do it, like unsafe.asref, but this will just magically work, which I think is brilliant conceptually. Again, it's very cursed, but I want to give you a bit more background on why this works. And you can do the same thing. You can basically use interpolated strings of any kind or make your own interpolated strings and do custom logic with the values captured. So I really want to know down in the comments what you would use string interpolated handlers for. If you want to see a full string interpolated handlers video, please leave a comment down below and let me know and I will make that video. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.